My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St Edward's Church in Leek for our all age celebration service on this Palm Sunday, which we're going to begin by joining in the responses, if you'll use the words in white on the screen. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because Jesus died for us, we thank you and praise you. Because Jesus rose again, we thank you and praise you. Because Jesus loves us, we thank you and praise you. Because Jesus is alive, we thank you and praise you. And now we'll sing our first song. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Let us say together, Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we come to confess our sins, trusting in the mercy of our Heavenly Father, as we join in saying together, Lord Jesus, I know that I have things to say sorry for. I am sorry that I was not always kind last week. I am sorry that I was not always helpful last week. I am sorry that I got cross sometimes last week. I am sorry that I hurt people who care about me last week. Please. Help me to be different this week. Help me to be more like you, Jesus. Amen. And so, may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, 
And in our song, we will praise our God. And now we'll sing our second song. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, 
the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him, and that followed, were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We can sometimes think of Palm Sunday as an isolated event. The beginning of the last week of Jesus' life. But it's really helpful and important to remember that it was also the culmination of three years of faithful powerful, obedient, effective and miraculous ministry. I want to talk about three R's and then talk about what the real significance of Palm Sunday should be for us today. First of all, rejoicing. Those who came to greet Jesus when he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday were very happy, but not for the right reason. Our lives are shaped by stories and traditions, probably more than we think. We understand who we are because we understand something of our history and how we got to be where we are. And that applies to both individuals and nations. The people who came to greet Jesus would have had in mind a great rebellion that had taken place 200 years earlier when the Jews were ruled by another foreign king called Antiochus. Over a period of about 20 years, the Maccabees family had waged war on the occupying forces of Antiochus and had eventually managed to secure the independence of Israel. The crowds who came to greet Jesus had heard that he was a great teacher, healer, miracle worker and even messiah. They believed that he was the one who would deliver Israel once again, not from Antiochus, but this time from the Romans. The tradition of waving palm branches was reserved for a royal visitor to Jerusalem. So by using them, the crowd were acknowledging their belief that Jesus was a king. They hoped that he would become their king by overthrowing the power of Rome. And that is why they were so excited. So what were the palms saying as they were being waved by the crowd? They were saying, we are tired of being kicked around. We want to be number one again. Here's our agenda. And you look like just the man we need. Welcome, warrior king. Hail, conquering hero. but a king about to wage war came on a horse. Only a king arriving in peace came on a donkey. This would have confused the crowds, and although they went along with it, the truth was that Jesus had not come to conquer Rome, but to defeat an even greater enemy, death, the power of death itself and he knew that would be immensely more costly. Beyond the rejoicing 
lay two more deeply significant events. Rejection In just a few days' time, another crowd would react very differently to Jesus. Instead of greeting him as the one who had saved them, they turn against him and call for his death, shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Maybe some of the same people were in that second crowd. Maybe they'd realised that Jesus wasn't going to do what they had hoped he was going to do. Or maybe that crowd was simply looking to avoid trouble and wanting to leave things as they were by getting Jesus out of the way. Or maybe that crowd was simply people who were in the pay of the Roman authorities and would do anything they told them to. Maybe it was a mixture of all three. But the fact was that they wanted Jesus, the one who had entered the city as a king, to die. And of course Jesus knew this when he first set out for Jerusalem. In the back of his mind, as he experienced the welcome of Palm Sunday, he knew and could sense the shadow of the cross falling across his life. Jesus knew that his time had come and that he would have to die in order to confront the forces of evil head on. And then, finally, there is redemption. Jesus knew, too, that out of all this, would come a wonderful and amazing redemption. The word redemption means a buying back. And it's only possible to buy something back by paying the appropriate price. What Jesus was looking to buy back was not the freedom of Israel from the Romans, but the freedom of humankind from the power of death and sin. And Jesus won that redemption by paying the price of his own life. Death is the wages of sin, but Jesus never sinned, so death had no hold on him. No one could kill him. His death could only take place with his permission, only if he allowed it. And he chose to allow it, so that his undeserved death could become a substitute for all of us. He brought us back for God. He has made it possible for us to be released from our bondage to the oppression of death and sin. That is why he came. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, it was the closest thing he got to a real welcome in his entire life. There was no welcome when he was born, or when he arrived in Egypt, or when he returned to Galilee, or when he came back from the Judean desert to begin his ministry. This is the only time on record where any kind of recognised public welcome was given to him. It was an exciting occasion, but we can see that the crowd who responded to him didn't really understand who he was or what he had come to do. They were celebrating something different from the reality. And so Palm Sunday invites us to look at ourselves and to ask ourselves the question, whose agenda do we think Jesus has come to fulfil? And if we think it's ours, then we need to draw back and think again. For us, it's true that Jesus has come to bring release and mercy and freedom and life, but it all still comes at a cost. The glory which Jesus entered into only came after the obedience and the perseverance and the suffering. And sometimes our life can be like that too. There are no shortcuts to what is to come. We have to arrive at each destination through a process. And our journey is only fruitful if life is lived 
in the presence of and in relationship with and in submission to Jesus. Jesus invites us to receive forgiveness freely, to receive life freely, and indeed to start a new life with him and for him freely. But there is a costliness to that choice, because Jesus asks us also to put him first, as he put the will of the Father first. And that means setting ourselves aside. So as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, what agendas do we bring? What hopes do we hold that Jesus might challenge? Are we ready to pay the price of doing God's will as he was? How much of the whole picture do we actually see? An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. That advertisement for the Guardian newspaper was made a very long time ago, but it illustrates very well that it's easy to jump to the wrong conclusions if we only see part of the whole, which is one reason why we need to read and be familiar with the whole of the Bible, Old and New Testaments, if we're to have a complete picture of God. Jesus is coming again one day in our future to bring in his victorious rule, and we will be delivered and rescued and enjoy the justice of his new kingdom then forever. But our task until then is not simply to batten down the hatches and wait, popping out on special occasions to cheer and wave. The challenge of Palm Sunday is that we need to be prepared to face the cost of being a true disciple and pray for the strength to persevere and endure and remain faithful to the end whatever that end might be. And today, in April 2020, Palm Sunday has an even deeper significance. Jesus entered Jerusalem knowing that pain and suffering and anguish lay ahead of him. But he came too knowing that his heavenly Father loved him and that whatever happened, nothing could separate him from that love. We too, at this moment in time, know that the days ahead will contain deeper pain and suffering and anguish. And we too are called to follow Jesus' footsteps and to trust in the loving care and presence of our Heavenly Father, whatever the future may hold, knowing that one day he will return to establish his eternal kingdom, where for all who have placed their faith in him, sorrow and death will be no more.
Jesus, thank you that you are the one true King of Kings. We rejoice because you have invited us to join you in the work of building your kingdom. Help us to follow you faithfully. Thank you that you were willing to suffer rejection because of your obedience to the Father. Help us to surrender our wills to yours. To be ready like you to count the cost and to persevere on the path of faith. Thank you that you have paid the price for our sin and one redemption for us all. Help us to let you work in us, to overcome the temptations we face in our daily lives, to sustain us in the midst of the trials of this present time, and day by day to live the new life which you give us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll sing our third song. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our
So now we'll use the responsive version of the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Jesus known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You have created us out of your love and for your love. Help us to welcome you with songs of Hosanna, knowing that you are our strength and our shield. Help us to welcome Christ our Lord into our lives as our Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, by you we are wonderfully created. Help us to use our talents and lives to the benefit of others and to your glory. May your church be an instrument of peace in the world. Lord, forgive the divisions in your church and help us to see we are one in you. Help us to work together to bring in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we long for the time when the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our God. Help us to work for peace and justice. Bless the work of all who strive to maintain and increase peace. We especially pray for the United Nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, come and rule in our lives, that there may be peace in our hearts and in our homes. We remember before you homes where there is conflict and violence where there is division and distress. Praying for your reconciling and renewing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we bring before you the troubles and distress of peoples and nations, especially at these difficult times. We remember the hungry and the homeless, those who have been displaced, those who have lost their livelihoods, those who can find no provision for their human needs. We pray that you will bless all agencies seeking to help them and give us generous hearts to support their work. We ask you to bless all who are not at peace with themselves, all who are disturbed in body, mind or spirit. 
that all who are ill at this time may know your love and your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints as we commend ourselves and all whom we love to your goodness and mercy, praying for your grace to follow in the footsteps of all the saints who have gone before us until that day when we share with them the joys of your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll sing our fourth song. Yeah. 
so we join in our final prayer. Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross for my sin. Thank you that you rose again so that I can have eternal life. And thank you that you are here with me now so that I can live for you every day. Amen. And so now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service for Maundy Thursday, and again on Good Friday, a reflection on the cross and then after that we invite you to join us once more next week for our service of morning worship on Easter Sunday.